Hello and welcome to Chemistry Solver 1. This is the uh, TA-84 calculator program designed to help first semester chemistry students. So real quick, let's talk about the menu here. We got stoichiometry, thermochemistry, gas laws, man, every variation, you're gonna love it. Solutions, acids, unit conversion. So without uh, further ado, let's go to stoichiometry. So you can calculate different things, molarity, percent composition, empirical form, and help. So let, let's go to molarity. I'm gonna make up some uh, fictive numbers here, or fictitious numbers, sorry, I'm being all pretentious. Molarity, uh, first it gives you the uh, formula, molarity equals moles over liters. So let's solve for molarity. So we've got six moles, and then we've got uh, nine liters, let's say. Um, the molarity equals 0.666 repeating. So I just wanna show you like, hey man, I wanna solve for volume. Cause you know, they're, they're tricky. They're not just gonna ask molarity. They're like, oh, if this is the molarity and we give you a certain number of moles, what's the volume? We're like, hey, we got you covered. So look, the volume would then equal the moles divided by the molarity. So we asked the question like, hey, let's say we have eight moles and the molarity is three. I'll tell you the volume is 2.66 repeating liters. So that's pretty cool. Um, Cause you know, teachers are notorious for switching around like what they're gonna solve for. And that's the beauty of this program. Again, if you have a TA-84 calculator, you know, this will this will cover you any kind of TA-84 um, even the T84 plus the regular one that has batteries or the T84 plus CE and this program is available at uh, mcstutoring.com. M's and Mary, C's and Charlie, S's and Sam. I'll try not to bug you with any more uh, shout outs to my own <laughs> website. But here, let's go to percent composition just so you see what's going on. So percent composition, you can solve for percent, you can solve for mass, you can solve for the uh, total. So um, let me give, give an example. Let's solve for percent. Let's say the mass of the element is uh, six, and um, the total mass, let's say, is twenty. Uh, I'll give an example. This is a terrible example. Uh, the percent's thirty, but let, let's do H two O. Let me let me do that. So if we if we solve for percent, and um, I know the mass of water is uh, sixteen, and then because that's H two O, so there's two H's. So I think the total mass there is eighteen. Um, so the percent of water, or sorry, percent of oxygen in H2O is 88.8%. Um, and again, we can solve for different things. We can solve for uh, the mass or the total. I'm going to go back. I don't want to belabor that point. But let's go to the help menu. I have this for all these. A student asks, hey, could you kind of explain what's going on here? So for stoichiometry help, uh, moles is moles per liter. Use G, grams for mass, and L for liter. And percent is uh, mass of the element over total times 100. And if you'd like me to write out more on the help menus, let me know. Um, I do read, dude, I'm a micro YouTuber. I'm not like a fraction of Mr. Beast size or any, <laughs> any big YouTuber. So I do read all the comments and uh, I adjust my game appropriately. Um, oh, whoa, empirical formula. Oh, there's a second page of this. Man, I forgot. Empirical formula, um, mass goes to moles, divide by smallest, then multiply to clear fraction part to check your units. Um, so let's go back and let's go to, uh, thermochemistry, just so you, what it can do. We've got enthalpy, heat capacity, temperature chains, Hess's law, STP conditions, and again, help menu. So enthalpy, um, and again, th this will solve like 90% of what I have on here. Cause sometimes it's so freaking complicated. I only have like the, uh, formulas described and an explanation, but for most of them, like I said, 90% I do solve. So in enthalpy, we've got delta H equals Q plus W. Again, we solve for delta H, Q, or W. Let's solve for Q. Let's see what the equation is. Q equals delta H minus W. Let's say uh, the delta H is 65 and W is 32. And then, so that means the Q is 33. Um, let's go back. I just want to get to all the menus, just a basic introduction to this. Because if you're in first semester chemistry, whether it's in high school, college, university, I think this will help you out a lot. Um, let's talk about temperature change. Now, look, this temperature change, I'm, I'm going to admit, man, I made this and uh, it's not perfect because uh, when, you, when you're when you very familiar with this, you know, it goes up and it's not always a temperature change. Sometimes there's a phase change. When I become a better coder, I will figure out how to do that. But for now, I'm just assuming we're all going to be in one phase, like typical, like, like say water is going up from five degrees to 95 degrees Celsius. Um, it can do that kind of thing. Um, so TF equals TI plus Q divided by C times M. Let me explain this. T sub F. Okay, I can't, I can't do subscripts yet in TI84, um, but that's T 
final, like temperature final, so T sub F equals T I, T sub I, T temperature initial. Um, energy, Q is the energy in joules. C is specific heat capacity. Man, I forgot. I think it's like four something for water, four point something. And M is mass in grams. So this is the initial uh, temperature in Kelvins. Let's say it's really cold out today and it's zero. Um, and you're like, hey, man, I would like to warm up the universe. So I'm going to give you just a bunch of joules. And then this specific heat capacity, let's say, let's say the universe is made of water. It's about four. Okay, the mass, dude, I don't know. I don't know what the mass of the universe is. Um, final temperature is 1.6. Look, it's so crazy. E to the negative four. So that means you have to move the decimal place four to the left. Kelvins. Okay, so we just, you know, we added a lot of energy. We didn't warm up the universe that much. Okay, and you can flame me in the comments if you're a chemistry or physics person. You're like, excuse me, the universe is not zero Kelvin. It's like 0 0.4. Okay, it's okay. Sorry. Um, don't mean to be mean. Okay, that's temperature change. Um, we got uh, Hess's law. S oh, let's go to STP conditions. So just so you know, STP, standard temperature and pressure. Um, zero degrees Celsius, which is 273.15 Kelvin. Pressure is 1 atm, which is, by the way, 101.325 kilopascals. IUPAC STP since 1982. So look, if you got an old person like myself who's uh, born before 1982, I'd be like, I remember when IUPAC STP was different. It was different. It made more sense. Okay, but for now, um, it's after 1982. If you get this and it's before 1982... Man, somebody's a cool time traveler and brought YouTube with them. So look, temperature, uh, zero degrees Celsius, 273.15 Kelvin. Pressure is one bar, otherwise known as 100 kilopascals. Um, and I know it's at odds with what the information up here. I am not a chemistry person. I'm just showing you the information. Um, I'm more of a math guy. I might be physics adjacent, but I'm far from chemistry. That was my dad's domain, chemical engineer. Um I tried never to ask him a chemistry question because he gave me a long explanation. Okay, so look, um, let's go to solutions. Oh, no, 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 gas laws. Ooh, ooh, this is so awesome. This is so awesome. Ideal gas law. Okay, I know, I know. I made it, so that's why I'm saying it's awesome. Boyle's law, Charles' law. Ooh, with the apostrophe S. Ooh, for your English majors, you should be uh, impressed. Um, Gay-Lussac's law. I think it's gay. I don't know. Maybe they just pronounced it gay because they didn't want to say the word gay in an all-male Catholic school in the 80s. Because that would just, uh, I don't know, lawsuits. Avogadro's law, combined gas law, gas constant R and help. Um, just, I want to go to uh, combine uh, the gas constant. So everybody's like, R is only one value. Wrong, wrong. It all depends on where you are and what you're using. So if you're using liters, ATMs, moles, and Kelvin, it's 0 0.08206. If you're using joules, moles, and Kelvin, guess what? It's 8.314. So look, teachers are going to throw different stuff. So I, I wrote this up here because I was I was the guy I'm making fun of right now. When I was taking chemistry in high school, I'm like, it's always, you know, 8.314, always 0 0.082. Uh-uh, uh-uh. It, it shifts according to whatever your teacher's giving you, the unit. So that's why I put it here. So it's it's on the program, baby. Okay, um, and help me. Okay, so gas laws help. Use ATM, liters, Kelvin, ideal gases. P equals NRT over V, or you could do PV equals NRT. You select proper R for real. Other laws are Boyle's, uh, Charles, Guy Lissac, et cetera. Keep units consistent. Um, so let's do ideal gas law. So look, PV equals NRT. This is huge. If you're doing gas laws right now, you want this program. So look, you're like, oh, well, you know, PV equals NRT. Well, what if you're trying to solve for something different, like PV and or T? So let's solve for uh, for T. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, so, oh, 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 killer thing. I, I, I was going to like, wait, what was the R values? I just like scrolled through them. I have no idea. So um, these are the typical ones. Um, so let's just say it's, it's, it's option two, which is 8.314 joules per moles Kelvin. So we're going to do that. Um, so uh, P, the answer will be in kilopascals. Oh, you got to like that. So uh, let's say uh, 69 and then... Um, Volume is five, and then number moles is four, and then bam, temperature is 10.3 something Kelvin. Yay. It gives you the formula. So look, if you had to write this down as work, you're like, oh, okay, you want to solve for temperature and ideal gas law? I got you. T equals PV over NR. 
you write r equals this you write all this um as your work and and you should be golden if it's not a multiple choice um so you can do new calculation of the same thing or you go back to back gas laws so let's go back to gas laws um just so you know i i do have you covered let's do charles law so um we can solve for v1 t1 v2 or t2 let's solve for t2 and let's see what we got going on so t2 equals v2 times t1 divided by v1 um if you're just joining us this is probably a funky video to be watching so um let's say v2 is eight liters um t1 25 you know uh v1 is nine and then so it looks like t2 would be 22.22 so look uh we, we got all that i want to go back and then we go to a combined gas law and it's generally uh p1 v1 over t1 equals p2 v2 over t2 um, I know you're probably like, hey, I want to solve for uh, the twos instead of P1, V1, T1. Probably in the next iteration. Oh, and by the way, if you do buy the, the uh, thing now, I mean, the, uh, you know, I think this is like ChemSol 1A. When I do make the variation um, ChemSol 1B or ChemSol 1C, the, uh, the, that iteration of it, um, you will get free updates. So not to worry. So when I do make the, you can solve for P2, V2, or T2. It's just that this thing got on like this is just a ginormous program it's over like 20 or 25 uh, kilobytes which is huge for a uh, calculator program so p2 let's say is 85 atms oh that's a lot of pressure um liters is four let's say t1 is 55 kelvin p1 is uh four atms we're released lowering the pressure t2 is 98 okay come on man solve something okay so v1 is 47.7 there we go so look, we got you covered with with gas laws. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, improvements can be made, but I got to admit that's pretty good. Um, solutions. Let's go over that real quick. You get solubility, colligative properties, molality. Um, let's go over solubility. Um, you can solve for solubility, moles or volume. So uh, let's solve for moles. Let's say solubility is eight liters, thirty-two. Okay, so we've got moles, two hundred fifty-six. That's a lot of moles or something. Okay, and then um, you got the help menu. Let me just show you. It shows you the formulas. I mean, I'm sure you can read if you're into this program and if you're illiterate and using this program, man, may God be on your side. This would be so difficult. Um, okay, so uh, we did the help menu. Let's go back. Sorry, I don't mean to make fun of illiteracy. That's shame on me. That's not cool. Um, let's talk about um, acids and bases. Um, you got pH, pOH, K sub A and K sub B. You got a water constant. You also have help menu. It's good to help um ph is negative log h positive or hydronium ion i think they call it and poh is negative log oh negative which is hydroxide ion and ph plus poh is 14 ka and kb equations are used i think that's what it means i'm not sure um and sure concentrations are in moles per liter for proper calculations of ph and poh okay so uh let's let's do that let's do uh ph and poh let's solve for ph and it's going to ask you um, H positive uh, in moles. Let's say it's point um, something like that. It sounds normal. So pH is four. That's acidic because it's less than seven. Um, let's go back. Um, we, I think we did the help menu. I hope we did. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Am I missing something? No, I don't know. Whatever. Maybe I am. I'll make I'll make more detailed stuff. Like I'll go over a set of stoichiometry problems, a set of thermochemistry problems, a set of gas problems. The gas problems might be two sets of problems because if you're watching like a two-hour video on gas laws of this, <laughs> oh, oh, lordy lord. Okay. Um, unit conversions. Let's go to that. So uh, you got SI prefixes. We got volume conversions, temp, time, mass, presses for pressure. Uh, I was trying to like not use as many letters let's go to si prefixes so you select your starting prefix right i don't have all of them but i've got like the usual suspects giga mega kilo unit deci centi milli micro nano pico giga man i know that guy um he's a kickboxer in gym i used to go to i think he's an mma guy now um he's cool he's a cool partner he's from georgia the country not the state okay hey man and, and under giga let's go giga here baby um, let's say the target is the unit because typically you're going back to units. Um, so the value is, let's say, 6.3, 6.3 giga, whatever's. That'd be, I don't know, like a whole lot of units. Uh, you count the zeros. I'm old. I don't want to spend my time doing that. Uh, we're going to go back here. 
Oh, no, let, let's do temp. Let's do temp. Okay, so you're going to go C to K, K to C, C to F, F to C. Okay, let's say you're in America. You're like, hey, man, the water temperature now is 57 degrees Fahrenheit. I'd like to know what it is in Celsius. Okay, ooh, 13.8. That's, that's, okay, I'm in Southern California, so that's kind of cold water. Like, for me, I, I'd say cool water. Anything below 60 is cool. Um, if I go below 54 and I'm trunking it, man, I'm only in for 20 minutes. Not that you need to know that. Uh, and um, okay, so we did we did the uh, temperature. Let's uh, time uh, mass. Let's go mass. Let's see if I can get anything cool. Okay, so these are typical things: gram to kg, kg to gram. Again, you could do this in the SI unit converter. Let's do kg to gram. I think I weigh. I, I used to weigh at some point. I weighed eighty kgs. I'm sure. Um, so that's eighty thousand grams. Wow, man, check me out. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to quit here. Thanks for using ChemSolver 1. So when you do the, buy the program, it's a funky file. Um, you get you get it emailed to you. Um, if you if you get ChemSolve, and I'm, I'm not like trying to get all street by naming it K-E-M-S-O-L-V, but you can only have like eight characters in a name of a file. That's why I named it that. And so if you get version like 1A, 1B, 1C, that's just the next iteration. I, I'm constantly upgrading this stuff. And I know my SAT peeps are like, hey, bro, uh, the SATs in March, you said you'd have an SAT5 iteration sometime like in January. Well, it's already February, so I got to beat March deadline. But look, uh, take care. Uh, good luck on all your chemistry endeavors. Check out mcstudent.com. Obviously, like if you like it. Subscribe if you want. I don't know if you want a subscription, man. Free subscription digitally, baby. So uh, check it out, mcstudent.com. Check you later.